Hi, my name is Jonas and next I'm going to show you how to use 32-bit float workflow for your CGI images. First I'll explain it in theory with some diagrams and then I'll show, it, show an example uh, how to do it in practice. So okay, let's go to the computer. Now I'll try to explain this rather simple thing in a simple way. So let's uh, imagine that you have a CGI scene with a very bright sun and uh, some, some very bright light source and some areas that are really, really dark. So your scene has a very uh, wide dynamic range. And let's say that this high histogram is uh, representing that, uh, uh, the, the whole dynamic range of your scene. And um, when you normally render out an uh, image, a JPEG or a TIFF, 8 or 16-bit image, you basically have to choose which part of uh, your scene is exposed uh, correctly and you kind of have to uh, leave out something so part of the image is going to be overexposed and part of the image is going to be uh, underexposed or like totally black so totally white or totally black because these areas that fa fall below zero uh, or are above 100 those are going to be clipped uh, and the information is gone. It's just total white, no details. Mm, and this is the uh, this is something that is common to 8-bit images and 16-bit images. So TIFF, JPEG, PNG, and all those images. But uh, if you use 32-bit float uh, images, um, then you have the option to still bring back information that is uh, like fallen uh, above 100 or fallen um, below zero. So basically, you don't see it when you when you look at the Im image. The white parts, over over exposed parts, still look over exposed, but the information is there. So basically, it means kind of like I'm uh, trying to explain it by using this transform uh, function. So I can kind of like lift stuff uh, from uh, total black, and I can recover highlights by compressing them uh, inside the zero and hundred bounds. And just to be clear, when we do this, this basically uh, decreases uh, contrast, but it increases dynamic range. When we're compressing the image, it, so when we compress the dynamic range to fit into this 0 and 100 space, we uh, lower contrast. So I can explain it by these two images. Uh, and let's pop up the histogram. Just a second. Let's put it to luminosity. Okay, here's the histogram. Uh, here is a very low contrast image, as, and as you can see, uh, the, the histogram is like compressed. It's only in the middle. But if I show you the high contrast version, you can see the histogram is uh, spreaded to left and right. So here, gonna, here you, can, you can see that a contrast and dynamic range are kind of like well opposite opposite things. Well, the, kind of the same thing, but on the opposite sides. Anyway, so this is the theory that. Uh, Here's a histogram, and when you take a picture, you lose uh, everything that falls below zero or is above 100 if you use 8 or 16-bit images. But if you use 32-bit float, then you can recover stuff because the information is still there. So that's the theory. Anyway, um, so in practice, here we have, uh, this is a 32-bit float image. And uh, as we can see here, we have some issues, like the neighboring wall should not be white. And there's another issue that uh, sometimes you have when you uh, render out 32-bit float images is that the colors um, close to zero, that are close to black, kind of start to go invert, inverted. So I'll fix that and let's fix this window as well. So let's start with the window. So <clears throat> to fix the window, we'll use the levels adjustment layer. Most of the adjustment layers are not uh, accessible in 32-bit float, but the levels is. So let's use that. And here, and we're going to use this uh, down uh, uh, the slider below the main one that we normally use this. But th this time we're going to use this. And this basically decreases contrast. And by decreasing contrast, it will increase dynamic range. So let's see, we slide it back. We start to get detail like the, the bricks, individual bricks of the wall start to be visible. So now we have the highlights recovered. Next, let's uh, kind of fix the uh, color issues here. So I um, don't really know how what causes this, but I, I know that this uh, weird coloring is because the hues are inverted. 
and we can do it by clicking this slider and bringing it up in this case about 30, uh, 24 maybe so now it's very 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 uh, low contrast image but again low contrast means high uh, means high dynamic range and the colors are kind of uh, straightened out straightened well straightened out so the colors are what they're supposed to be they're not inverted so now this is basically the 32-bit float part and now we just go mode 16-bit image mode 16-bit and yes we want to merge the whole thing I'll choose uh, exposure and gamma because this keeps the the image visually identical and okay and then I'll bring back and now you can see we we have these adjustment layers back uh, back on track we can all use them as, as we want so I'll choose the exposure I don't I mean the curves and I'll just bring the back blacks down and then I'll make a nice uh, kind of like gamma adjustment so I'll in like this something like this and now we basically have um, well an image that we have we have controlled we have um, what's the word we have been mastering the dynamic range of the image correctly and next I'm gonna show you how to do after this like after this global adjustment I'm gonna show you how to do local adjustments I'm gonna show you two techniques the first one is uh, for example uh, the first one I'll I'll give a nice pop to the floor so I'll make another cur curves adjustment layer then I'll be just I will be watching just the floor and I'll add a bit of contrast to the floor so it looks good a bit, bit too much well I guess it could be nice let's just adjust it a bit more let's say that that's good and <coughs> to add uh, to to affect this only to the floor I'll make the mask inverted and then I'll add, uh, take the brush tool make the brush big and nice and add the flow about 20 some, some, somewhere there and then I start <coughs> I'll add white and I'll start painting in uh, the mask so painting white to the mask so it will wherever it's the wherever the mask is white there it will there it will be applied the layer will be applied and where it's black there the layer will not be applied so that's about it so now can we now we're gonna see that the floor got a quite nice remake and now I will show you another one so this was this kind of like brute force technique just by uh, well adding white painting white but next let me do a bit more advanced and this time I want to bring more I uh, kind of like want to uh, bring more uh, clarity I would say that the highlights the window part I'll create another uh, contrast slider again and then I'll just bring down the exposure like this and then I'll add a, I'm now I'm looking only at the window because we're gonna mask it quickly uh, and then I'll add a bit of vibrance and a bit of saturation and if we put this into a group you can see that the well the outside looks a bit better now so to um, to apply this layer only to the window I'll use um, something called a luminance mask so I'm going to create a mask based on the luminance values of the image and that is done easily with this free plugin from uh, Jimmy McIntyre and with this plugin uh, I can just create a bright mask and now it created these extra channels where I can choose what I want to like what part what part of the luminance I want to emphasize and let's say this looks well let's use this 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 looks quite nice so the so the, uh, as again, and here I can uh, can kind of the black parts are not uh, affected and the white parts are affected and everything between depending on the shade of the gray will uh, uh, will uh, be gradually more and more affected so let's create a just a second yeah yep let's create a mask to this group let's invert it so basically making it invisible 
then choosing this sprite mask one, pressing command and then pressing clicking this. Now we have this um, and we have to click this R RGB layer back, the RGB channel back to have the co correct uh, colors. And now I'll start painting in just the parts that I want to affect. So let's make a big, nice brush. Yeah, maybe not that big. And I'll just paint in with the wall flow is good. I'll paint in what I, where I want it to affect. And just painting in like this. Okay, and now I'll uh, command D to deselect the marching ants. And here you can see that I kind of give a slight, uh, I, well, I brought the down the highlight part just a bit. And if we watch at the uh, mask, as you can see here, this is the mask, and all the dark parts are not affected, only the white parts. But I still want to kind of refine it, and I'll just uh, add a bit of black to these edges. Let's have the flow a bit lower there. And I'll just add a bit of black to uh, restrict the effect of the layer just to the parts that I want it to affect. So let's see, maybe something like this. Okay, let's see. So now it's good. Yeah, okay. So. Here we, uh, here we had the two uh, techniques of just a brute force painting the mask in or then using this free plugin from uh, Jim, Jimmy McIntyre to create this luminance mask and then uh, do a bit more defined work. Okay, so here it is. Thank you and go ahead and practice. Bye.